Mushroom Cultivation Course Part 3. This section is dedicated to preparing grains for grain spot. The goal here is to have perfectly hydrated, sterilized grains in sealed mason jars for our spores to germinate on. Here is a jar that is already in progress. You can see the grains and you can see the mycelium growing. This white stuff right here is mycelium. The mycelium will continue to grow until the whole jar is covered in white. But before I could get the mycelium started in there, I had to make sure that everything else in this jar was dead. No bacteria, no spores, nothing else should be alive. And the way to do it is with extreme heat. And that's what we're gonna cover in this step. So, okay, so let's go over the supply list. Again, if you were with us on the retreat, you should have all of this already in your package. But if you're just joining us from YouTube, everything here should be pretty easy to find. So let's start out first. Here we have a digital scale because precision is the key. You have to have a perfect balance between moisture and the grains. Second, we have rye berries. This is my grain of choice, even though you have a few to choose from. Uh, they tend to resist contamination problems because they don't burst and they don't get mushy during the cooking process. And mushy grains tend to grow contamination. This is usually where people ask me, how does contamination grow in a jar after we've already sterilized it? Why does it matter if the grains get mushy if we've already sterilized it pretty well? Because while we do our best with the sterilizing job, we are never going to achieve 100% sterilization. There's always going to be something left alive in there and the best we can do is give our mycelium a really, really good head start. This is why I never buy kits or buy pre-sterilized grains or substrates. You never know how long it's been sitting on the shelf and allowing whatever is in there to slowly grow back. When that happens, your project will slowly fail. It may be several weeks or even months before you realize something is wrong and then you have to throw everything away. I'm a chronic pain patient, guys. I don't have time or patience for that, and I doubt that you do either. Okay, so next item. Okay, so we have these quart size mason jars with a one single hole punched in the top. Next, we have micro pour tape. You can buy this at the pharmacy. This is a porous tape that allows gas exchange while keeping out contaminants. You're also going to need a very large pressure cooker with a 15 PSI weight. We're also gonna need a few cups of water. Tap water is just fine. Remember that these mushrooms, they grow on poop and that's their natural habitat. So there's no need to break out the Evian. Uh, the recipe that we're going to be sticking to is one part grain and one part water by weight. And that's by weight, that's why we have the scale out. So let's take up the scale, move these guys over to the side. I'm gonna place my jar on here and zero it out. So for these quart jars to come up with about the ideal amount of, of, um, of, of grains in here, which is gonna be about filling about halfway, is going to take about 160 grams of grain and 160 grams of water. So I've placed the jar on the scale and zeroed it out. And now I just start adding grains until I've reached Okay, so there, exactly 160. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna go ahead and zero this out again. There, now the scale is at zero. And I'm going to pour water until I've reached 160 again. There we go. And there we have a jar that has the exact amount of water and the exact amount of grains. Place that on the side. 
The reason we don't want them to be overfilled is because the mycelium actually breathes oxygen. And if we fill these jars, if we fill them all the way up to the top, they will suffocate. And as they suffocate, they will stall out and the growth will stall out and it's impossible to recover at that point. We give you six of these quart sized jars in your package because that is the appropriate amount to fill the container that we give you for, for fruiting. So now we're gonna just fill these jars one by one. Okay, after all the jars are filled, place the tops on and close them. Now, on top of each one of these holes, you're going to place a small piece of micropore tape. The micropore tape will keep any contaminants from getting inside. after the, the sterilization process. So as you can see, there's like some sloshy water inside there. Okay, so after you close the holes with the, with the, the micropore tape, you wanna place your, your jars inside of your large pressure cooker. Your pressure cooker needs to have enough water at the bottom, about, about three inches usually, to, to last about 90 minutes of cooking at pressure. So you line up all of your jars inside the pressure cooker. And that is how they're going to be cooked. Remember, if we're, we're, they're going to have to be cooked at, for 90 minutes, and that means 90 minutes at pressure. So you start counting those 90 minutes as soon as your pressure cooker actually reaches the proper pressure. The next step is going to be inoculating the jars after everything is cooled down to room temperature. So please subscribe and follow for more videos. And until next time, bye.